next, let us look into the shear capacity of concrete sections without the shear reinforcement. It is represented by the symbol VRDC. This VRDC represents the shear capacity of the concrete without the shear reinforcement. It is checked against the shear loops acting on the member and there will be two possible outcomes. When VRDC is more and equals to the shear loop, that means the concrete alone is adequate to resist the shear loop. In this case, shear reinforcement is theoretically not required. However, as a safety measure, normally we will provide the nominal shear link. In the case that VRDC is less than the VED, which is the shear load, that means the concrete alone will be inadequate to sustain the shear load. We will require shear reinforcement in order to resist the load. With that, the shear reinforcement is to be designed and to be provided accordingly. This slide shows the equations used to determine the VRDC of the concrete. There are two conditions here, which is represented by the relationship between the flexural tensile stress FCT, FL, and also the design tensile stress of the concrete, which is FCTD. The conditions are when the flexural tensile stress is less than the design tensile stress of the concrete and also when the flexural tensile stress is more than the design tensile stress of the concrete. What does this mean? This is actually representing the response of the beam under the loot. Or to be simply said, we are referring to the uncracked regions under bending and also the cracked regions under bending. Again, what does it mean? By looking at the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram here, you know that the mixed band of the beam normally have higher magnitude of moment. At a certain level of the load, fractional crack will occur and it normally start with the mixed band and this is the regions meant by the crack regions in bending which the bending force is being converted into the flexural tensile stress of the concrete when it is less than the design tensile stress of the concrete we know that the concrete sections is yet to crack that's why it is known as the uncracked conditions in bending. However, if the moment being converted into the equivalent flexural tensile stress, when the stress is more than the design concrete tensile stress, we know that the concrete has now cracked, and therefore it is known as the crack in bending. The two different conditions will have different manners for you to calculate the VRDC. Bear in mind that this diagram is produced to assist in the explanations on the concept of the FCT, FL and FCD. Different beam sections may have different conditions of the crack and uncrack region. It is very much depending on the bending moment acting on the member. At a low overall bending moment on the section, it is possible for the entire section to remain uncracked. Under the moderate moment loot, there will be regions of cracks and uncracks. Also under a high degree of moment, the uncracked regions may reduce. Therefore, it is more specifically termed as 
when the flexural tensile stress is less than or greater than the design tensile stress of the concrete. Now let us first look into the first situations. This is when the stress generated within the member are within the tensile capacity design strength. In this case, these formulas may be used. The I here represents the second moment of inertia of the cross section. BW represents the width of the web. The S here represents the section modulus. FCTD represents the design concrete tensile strength, which can be calculated from this formula in the functions of FCTM. Depending on the grade of concrete, the equations used to predict the FCTM varies. When the concrete strength is less than 50, this equation is used to determine the FCTM. Otherwise, this equation is being used. There is a factor alpha L here which is depends on the type of pre-stressing method. If you use the pre-tensioning method, the factor alpha L here will be equals to Lx divided by its upper bound of the transmission length. The calculation steps for the transmission length has been discussed in the previous chapter. This is where we are going to use the transmission length. The upper bound of the transmission length will be 1.2 times x transmission length. And this ratio needs to be less or equal to 1.0. The Lx here is assumed to be equivalent to 1 times the depth of the tendon. For the other type of pre-stressing method, the alpha L is taken as 1.0. Next, we need to determine the sigma CP, which is the compressive stress caused by the pre-stressing tendon. The P here will be the total pre-stressing force acting on the member, and the A here represents the cross-sectional area of the section. The compressive stress due to the tendon is limited by 0 0.2 times FCD. FCD is the design concrete strength of the section, which is calculated by dividing the FCK by X partial factor of safety of 1.5. Substitute all the value into the equation here, you are able to produce the VRDC for the uncracked concrete section. Based on the VRDC obtained here, you are to be checked against the shear load. If VRDC now is greater than the shear load, that means no shear reinforcement is required and you will just need to provide the nominal shear link. However, if the shear resistance of the concrete is less than the shear load, Shear reinforcement will be required. Next, we look into the second case where the flexural tensile stress now is greater than the design tensile stress of the concrete. Its VRDC here can be determined from these equations, which is the maximum of these two. This represents the shear capacity of the concrete under crack conditions and this represents the minimum shear capacity of the concrete under the crack conditions. Now let us first look into the VRDC here. It can be obtained based on the formula here which the CRDC is obtained by dividing 0 0.18 with the partial factor of safety of concrete 
which is 1.5. The K here is in the functions of the effective depth. And the value K here needs to be less or equals to 2.0. There will be raw T here, which represent the amount of reinforcement bar within the cross sections of the member. This ASL here represent the area of tensile steel extended with at least the transmission length plus the effective depth beyond the sections considered. Next, we'll have FCK here, the concrete grade. There is another component here, which is by the K1, which is 0 0.15. And also the Sigma CP, which is the compressive stress caused by the pre-stressing load. This is actually the same equations as this. Next, the entire function here is to be multiplied with BD. The BW here represents the width of the web and D here represents the effective depth of the section. Now we look at VRDC minimum which is given by this formula which is the combinations of V min and also K1 sigma CP. This shear minimum here is the same equations that you seen in the reinforced concrete design, which is 0 0.035 times k power of 2 per 3 times square root of FCK. The k here is given by the formula here, and the FCK is the concrete strength. The K1 and Sigma CP represent the effects of the pre-stressing tendon. K1 is taken as 0 0.15. The Sigma CP will be the same equation here. Again, this entire function here is to be multiplied with BD. Substitute all the relevant value into the equations and you are able to obtain VRDC and also VRDC minimum. The bigger value of the two will be considered as the VRD concrete at the crack region. This VRDC here is again to be checked with the shear loot. If VRDC here is greater than the shear loot, that means no shear reinforcement is required. For safety measure, you will need to provide nominal shearing. However, if the concrete resistance is less than the shear loads, you will require shear reinforcement. Here, I would like to emphasize that under different conditions of the loads, the crack and uncrack sections may appear in the beam. Some beams are fully uncracked, then you just need to check for VRDC1. Some beams are found to have the uncracked and cracked sections coexist. For example, under this situation, where there are cracked and uncracked region, then you need to check for both conditions. For each condition here, there are two possible outcomes. It's either it is greater than the shear load or it is lesser than the shear load. When it is greater than the shear load, that means you only need to provide the nominal shearing. However, when it is lesser than the shear load, you will need to provide the shear reinforcement. That means under these circumstances, these two conditions need to be checked separately and whether they require shear reinforcement is purely based on their situations whether it is greater than the shear load or less than the shear load. This leads to a situation that there are various possible outcomes throughout the section. 
you may only require the nominal sharing throughout the span or the entire span require the share reinforcement or only the cred region require share reinforcement and the uncred regions only require nominal sharing or even you require sharing here and you do not require sharing here all this outcome will have to based on the conditions whether it is greater or less than the share loot with that you are advised to check the conditions carefully before you decide whether the share reinforcement is required